Okay, guys, so today we have Javier Del Pino from the University of Constance, and he's going to talk about chirality and topology in optomechanical networks via bosonic squeezing. So, Javier, whenever you want, you can start. Thank you so much for, for coming today. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. So, uh, yeah, so uh, the title, in a way, speaks by itself. I will try to explain what uh, each of these uh, keywords mean uh, in the context of my talk. What's, what do I mean with chirality and topology? And what do I mean with uh, uh, optomechanical networks and, 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 and all over that? Um, so first, I'd like to start by, um, by uh, appreciating. Uh, this is not a work that I did myself. Appreciating all of my collaborators uh, at different places. Um, the experiments that I will be uh, reporting on were uh, performed at uh, um... Sorry, Javier. Can you hear it? Can you hear me? I appreciate uh, Professor Behagen. Yes. We, are, we are losing you a little bit. So we, yeah. we hear you very bad. Let's Here. remove our cameras, no? As well. Okay, let's try. Uh, I, yeah, I think it's... Do you hear me well? Now, now, now it's better. Ah, yeah, sorry. No, it seems like the bandwidth is a little limited. So I was appreciating uh, my uh, experimental collaborators. Uh, um, but also I'd like to appreciate uh, Andreas, uh, Clara, and Mateo, who were uh, part of the, of the, of the theory collaboration that I will describe uh, close to, to, to the end of the talk in the second part. Um, and now um, I also uh, like to appreciate uh, Odette, uh, who is now um, uh, before at ETH, now in Constance, who is part of the more, more of the outlook of, of, of well, the results that I will be describing today. So um, now I like to uh, give uh tell you a very short uh story and that's the story of um the a photon that propagates in, in vacuum uh a photon does not uh that's it's characterized by a linear dispersion relation at a constant uh, speed speed of light um it basically does not interact with uh, other photons it barely does and um, it does not react to uh, electric or uh, magnetic fields because it has no charge. So this uh, it's uh, this leads to uh, the common property of uh, reciprocity, uh, which means that if we if we take um, if we take a, a source and an observer and we exchange them, we effectively get the same the same outcome, the same amplitude, for instance, of of energy transport. Now, uh, with phonons uh, instead of photons, uh, at at very uh, naive level, uh, the story repeats. So phonons do also have uh, a linear dispersion relation, and uh, do basically uh, obey the same the same the same principles and have the same limitations. So uh, now this brings me to uh, chirality and topology and what this means in this context. But in order to motivate that, I will introduce what. First, what's uh, a metamaterial? So in order to uh, now uh, tailor the propagation of photons or phonons uh, in, a, in a material, we need to, there is a way to do so, which is creating arrangements of resonators, for instance, uh, in space. Uh, in this way, we can tune the, uh, the dispersion relation. Um, we not, not necessarily have to do this in space. We can also do it in time, uh, meaning that we can consider now um, uh, modes on 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 a semi on the same uh, spatial position, uh, but at different frequencies, and use uh, time dependent couplings in order to 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 engineer interactions between between these modes. This is usually called uh, floquet driving uh, or parametric drive. Uh, it depends on who do you talk to. Um, now. Um, with uh, these tools at, at our disposal, one may think that um, we can use these arrangements of resonators, photonic or phononic resonators, to emulate condensed metaphysics. So 
um, we can now uh, take um, uh, these arrangements, form uh, arrays with them, uh, and then try to see uh, what funny uh, new dispersion uh, properties uh, can we can we obtain. But it is well known now that the properties of um, of uh, certain condensed matter systems are not only characterized by the geometry uh, of of these arrangements, but also by the topology of the uh, of the wave functions uh, of this of this of this uh, of these systems and 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 a way and a characteristic example is the quantum Hall effect uh, that that is experienced by a two D electron gas uh, threaded by a magnetic field. So in this case. The system has um, uh, a one-way or chiral uh, current uh, on on the edges, which is um, tied to uh, topological uh, invariant in the in the bulk. So, if we now try to uh, mimic this uh, in our uh, photonic or phononic uh, systems, um, well, we simply can't because they don't react to uh, electric or magnetic fields, and so. Uh, this way of creating a one-way uh, state or a non-reciprocal state, it's forbidden by this. Uh, in fact, the, the, the missing ingredient is that we don't know how to uh, break down reverse asymmetry the same way as, 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 uh, as magnetic fields uh, do in, in condensed matter systems. So um, how do we do that? Um, in order to understand how, we have to go back to uh, the, the case of a single particle. Um, and what's the effect of time reversal symmetry or the breaking thereof in this uh, single particle? If we consider now um, an electron, which can move between two uh, points in space uh, around a region where uh, there is a solenoid uh, threading uh, a finite magnetic flux, um, then uh, the interesting point is that this 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 electron will pick up uh, a finite phase uh, as it uh, loops around uh, the solenoid, even though it's not filling uh, the magnetic field of the solenoid at all, uh, because it's inside, it's confined uh, to to this region. So um, electrons, the wave function of electrons or charged particles, do pick up phases uh, in 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 the presence of of uh, of, uh, of magnetic fields. And we can emulate this fix, uh, this uh, phase pickup uh, using the same trick as, as, as with, uh, with a floquet drive. We take two modes at different frequencies and we modulate uh, the coupling between them uh, in time um, precisely at the frequency difference uh, between, between these two modes. And if we add, uh, if we add a phase, uh, to, to to this uh, to this uh, modulation of the coupling, uh, at least with with some with respect to some reference clock, um, we can uh, make the uh, the transitions uh, pick up uh, such a phase in the same way as an electron will do in a magnetic field, and this idea has been uh, tried and, and successfully proven in 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 photons. And also, um, and also in phonons, where we were part of the um, of the of the first to 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 show this, in particular in in uh, in an optomechanical system. So um, this leads me to now um, the topic of what can we do with that? What, what's the, what's the minimum uh, the minimum effect that now one can uh, achieve with with this uh, artificial uh, magnetic field, and this is um, chiral transport. So if we consider now three modes, um, these are uh, in this particular um, results that I will be showing. These are three mechanical modes uh, on an optomechanical system, but it doesn't matter by now. For now, um, and we connect them uh, by 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 uh, drives uh, with uh, at the different frequencies, uh, different frequencies between these modes with certain phases. Um, we can break down reversal symmetry in the transport. And how do we see this? If we now initialize one uh, one of these modes, we just prepare um, a coherent state. Uh, this is now experiments, by the way. We prepare a coherent state, uh, which is drive one of the modes for a little while 
we turn on off the drive and uh, we turn on the interactions and what we see that if there is no um if the if the overall phase uh, accumulated over this path is uh, it's zero then the the uh, excitation shares more or less evenly uh, between the two other modes there are differences in amplitudes because there are modes at different frequencies and they are thermally occupied and so on but if now if we um if we uh, have a finite phase if the overall phase pick up it's equal to pi over 2 then you see that the the modes um uh, the 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 energy is it's uh, propagated in a chiral fashion so in in this in this in this way in a clockwise uh, sense as you can see here and this is similar physics as what you will observe uh in uh, in uh, in many other uh, uh similar uh, uh cases like three superconducting uh, qubits that are excited um, sorry, this is this is wrong. It's three superconducting microwave cavities that are excited by um, by 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 a photon and and and, and have a non-trivial um, uh, uh, gauge field or magnetic field threading the the system. So it's it's very it's a very common phenomenon. Um, and through this, one could uh, now potentially uh, think about. Um, creating larger uh, lattices um, of, uh, of resonators, these metamaterials that I was mentioning before. And through this, uh, these principles have indeed been applied um, quite widely and many uh, different forms of, um, of, uh, of topological uh, phases uh, in photons and phonons have been proven. But now all of this uh, story, it is tied to, uh, to uh, just a simple mathematical fact mathematical fact which is that the uh, waves uh, in this in this system they obey the same equations as the Schrodinger equation for uh, an electron a single electron uh, in in a in a topological insulator um, if we, we just have one single electron we don't have interactions so all of these effects um, are in some sense expected and the statistics of whether we are dealing with uh, electrons or fermions, or we are dealing with uh, with photons or phonons that are bosons, it doesn't play any role. In order to to find now something new, we need to start considering, um, for instance, uh, nonlinear effects, which will create uh, effective uh, interactions uh, between between uh, between between our our uh, excitations. Um, but um, of course, there is, this is this is now an ongoing path, and I'm gonna just um, show you what is one of the potential um, uses of one of the effects that nonlinear interactions can bring you, which is bosonic squeezing. Um, now, uh, just explaining very uh, very fast what's. Uh, what's uh, bosonic squeezing. Um, here I take you to the example of a child in a swing, and uh, which is effectively is just modulating the spring constant uh, of, of this, uh, of this uh, swing in time. Uh, this uh, it's effectively the same as uh, two photon, uh, a two photon drive if you write it with quantum operators. Um, the way that you can see this is that you have now two, um, uh, to uh, coupled, you can imagine now two coupled uh, oscillators, or or even just one oscillator with the spring constant is is changing, and um, by by now changing either the frequency of this oscillator or the coupling between the two oscillators in time in the right way, um, the only surviving um, processes are uh, processes like this one. Uh, where the where the, an excitation can be uh, can hop from one from one mode into another. This is just regular hopping, or um, ex or processes where two um, where two excitations are created and destroyed uh, simultaneously in two resonators, which are two photon drives or two mode squeezing terms, uh, depending on who uh, community are you talking to, and. Um, and this can be uh, engineered and highly controlled. 
um, in, in, in optomechanical systems, as I will uh, show uh, in a bit. Um, but what's the effect of this of these terms? Well, the simplest one, um, if if one think of the case of uh, where where i is equal to j, uh, so single mode squeezing, uh, is to um, is to um, create and destroy a pairs of uh, of photons uh, in a resonator or phonons for that matter. And this uh, amplifies uh, the, the the excitation uh, on one uh, axis and will be amplify on a different axis or or quadrature. So this uh, amplification in one uh, direction of the phase space and and attenuation in the opposite it's uh, it's the is a defining characteristic of squeezing. It's the same as parametric amplification of of fluctuations uh, in, a, in a system. So this is actually um, an experimental um, plot of, of, of the squeezing of thermal fluctuations. You can also squeeze quantum fluctuations. Um, squeezing, um, when one writes down the, um, the, 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 the dynamics, uh, the dynamical metrics of a squeeze system, um, one faces uh, a problem with a non-hermitian uh, dynamical metrics. Um, this is well known since roughly 80 years. Um, and the most important aspect uh, is that now this, this non Hermitian dynamical metrics will support complex uh, against spectra. And so because of it, um, it will uh, can have, among many other properties, uh, degeneracies. Uh, like these ones, which are usually known uh, as exceptional points, where um, the where both the imaginary and the real parts of the eigenspectrum are um, degenerate. The in this case, the the real parts corresponds to the eigenfrequencies, and the imaginary parts corresponds to the uh, damping and and gain in the in the modes of the system. So you can have now these features, uh, which are characteristic non-Hermitian features or, or, or features of a non-Hermitian metrics, which you couldn't have um, in, a, in, a, in a Hermitian system. And in particular, I forgot to mention here, uh, this is precisely because of the bosonic, um, uh, the bosonic um, commutation relations. So in fermions, this matrix is Hermitian and you cannot have these, uh, these exceptional points, for instance. So uh, combining now um, the idea of, uh, of a broken hermeticity or non-hermitian dynamics with, uh, with notions of non-trivial topologies, such as, for instance, through gauge fields, um, has led to complete new um, um, well, a breadth of, uh, of, of, of works on, uh, on this topic that show that have proposed um, effects such as uh, topological amplification of um, of uh, of edge states uh, through through squeezing and uh, topological lacing um, there are different variants of of in this in these works of where the um, the what is the origin of the amplification uh, or gain in these systems but but many of them are, have actually looked at uh, at gains through through squeezing and there are I'm not trying to be comprehensive here. I'm really there's really really many many works now on on this on this topic. So uh, having explained just what's squeezing and what's or just overview what what do I mean with chirality uh, or the one way character and what type of topology I'm interested in studying, I'm going to explain what is an optomechanical network. And I have to explain first what is optomechanics uh, only briefly. Um, in optomechanical uh, cavities, um, one uses radiation pressure uh, to, to effectively uh, apply forces on mechanical oscillators, which can be thought as a, as a, as a mechanical modes on the, on the mirrors uh, of, of, of a cavity. And, and this change in, uh, in mechanical position produces uh, a, a shift in the frequency, uh, in the resonance frequency of the cavity. So this leads to uh, a mutual, um, a mutual process uh, 
and, and, and is usually leads to what it's called dynamical back action process between the two. So for example, you can imagine now that, that if you have the response of the cavity as a function of frequency, and uh, and then uh, and then sorry, as a function of mechanical position here, and you park now uh, a laser here uh, tuned on resonance uh, with the cavity. Since the mechanical position is altering the resonance frequency of the cavity, um, at at points uh, at moments uh, the cavity will be resonant with the laser, and at other moments it won't be. So the number of photons in the cavity can 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 change according to the mechanical position even in time for instance um now uh, if you there are many um, types of optomechanical resonators the results that i'm uh, showing um are uh, corresponding to uh, what it's called a sliced uh, nanobeam uh, it's uh, it's essentially a, it's very similar to two strings of uh, of a guitar placed very close to, uh, to one another. Um, this, is, um, this is a cavity that is very, uh, is very dissipative. Um, so the, the effectively the, the, the optical losses are way faster than, than the mechanical um, uh, frequencies. The mechanical frequencies are of the order of megahertz. And, um, and interestingly, uh, there is uh, there are many uh, many mechanical modes in this structure um, that can uh, change the that uh, that that interplay uh, with the optical mode. So there are many many modes that can be accessed through radiation pressure. This is uh, now a, a cavity spectrum of this of this uh, of this um, platform. And you can see uh, many, many resonance. Well, many, many uh, at least uh, three or four resonances that you can access to through uh, through uh, radiation pressure. So in this platform, uh, what we did uh, was to uh, use this radiation pressure to uh, create parametric interactions to create uh, the changes of frequency in time or the or the or the time dependent couplings that I was mentioning before. And, and you can do this by by changing um, the number of photons in the cavity in in a right way. Um, you can, uh, if you are uh, interested uh, about uh, about further details on this, I'm happy to I'm happy to 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 tell you a little bit uh, more about how the experiment was performed. But um, I'm just gonna jump uh, to to some results on this. Um, I I showed you uh, a second ago uh, that uh, by coupling three modes um, through uh, through here drives that are at different frequency between these modes, you can have similar physics uh, the, the physics uh, that correspond to an an artificial uh, or, or the, that corresponds to a magnetic field that uh, threads uh, three sides of a, of a, of a system. Um, so now, uh, what if we add squeezing uh, into it? Um, I told you uh, that that squeezing uh, it's equivalent to amplification of uh, of, uh, in, of one quadrature in phase space and the deamplification of the other. And there is also an alternative. And there is an alternative way to to think about it. Um, now I. Uh, direct your attention to this to this case where we are uh, having two uh, two modes. These are two. This will be two mechanical modes uh, in practice. That are each of them uh, squeezed. Uh, they are driven by a two photon drive uh, themselves, and they are coupled. And we have um, control over all of the phases of these uh, squeezing uh, drives and the and the coupling terms. Squeezing um, is uh, a, a two photon drive. It's completely equivalent to um, to a conversion or or a, or, a, or a, the annihilation of a photon and the creation of an anti photon. This is this is quite obvious if you think about it. So it just comes from the fact that that the annihilation operator, uh, the square of it, the a square, is the same as as a times uh, a dagger dagger, <laughs> and if you if you use this this uh, very 
silly insight if you think about it. Um, you can see that that a, a system like this actually spans a loop. So you can uh, go from one uh, mode to another, either by coupling directly or uh, through uh, a coupling, a squeezing. So going from a particle into a hole and then back and then squeezing back. So you see that uh, a system like this actually um, um, can accumulate a, a finite uh, a finite phase uh, over there is an actual loop in this in this system and this uh, effective flux has an effect um, the uh, the main effect that it has is that it also allows you to uh, the same way as as it happens for uh, for a for a Hermitian system it allows you to to move the to change the energies. So now uh, this is now the complex um, the complex uh, eigen spectrum for this for this system as a function of um, of the of the ratio between the coupling and the squeezing and as a function of this uh, effective flux. So you can see that that basically these surfaces can be can be moved uh, uh, around uh, as a function of of the flux. And uh, and this is now um, this is now an effect that has no uh, direct analog in uh, in in fermionic systems because it relies on 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 well on on, on squeezing in this case. Um, so can I ask you a very brief question? Yes, please. I miss what what's the meaning of theta two in here? Is this a, the driving? Is the the phase of the two photon drive or something like this or yes or... exactly yes okay, okay. yes it's in the in the squeezing term so to say in the hamiltonian yes yeah so sorry i forgot to i forgot to write here what it's actually uh the value of this uh phi um of this capital phi so this is uh this is the phase accumulated over all of this process um so it's a it's basically it's twice this phase uh plus this phase minus this phase Okay, but it could be it could be zero. Theta one and theta two could be zero, and still you would get a, a non-trivial phase, right? Exactly. That's that's a, that's a, that's completely true. So, um, yeah. So in fact, yeah. In fact, there is a lot of uh, redundancy, uh, or because there is a lot of gauge variance in the in how one chooses the phases of the problem. Um, but we realize that this that this particular uh, sum uh, gives you a gauge invariant capital phi. Okay. Thank you. Um, so um, yeah, so so yeah, this is one of one of the effects is is that is that the the dispersion or or the energies can be tuned, um, and here this means that uh, one can tune uh, both the 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 splittings the the, the frequency splittings and also um, tune the imaginary part, which means tuning the the gain and the and the loss of the of the of the of the model and the mechanism uh, in this case it's it's relatively easy to understand um if we now write um instead of writing um this this diagram this mode diagram in the particle hole basis we do it in the quadrature basis then what we see is that on each resonator we will have because of the squeeze the two photon drives we have um a quadrature that is uh, that is damped and another one that it's uh, amplified and through uh, through the coupling uh, between between them, now we we in this case we are fixing the gauge of the of the so we are fixing the phase on each of the resonators and we are just tuning the uh, phase of the of the drive that connects them. Through the phase of this drive, one can choose to to couple quadratures that are uh, loosey uh, with one another or 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 gainy with one another. Or cap or uh, quadratures that are uh, the experience loss and gain on different resonators, and through this one can form hybrid modes that are overall uh, amplified or overall damped. That's why uh, the phase and the same sense the flux changes this this uh, the gain and the and the loss and also the and also the frequencies. But still, this doesn't show um, non-reciprocity per se. And uh, because because if we will now uh, um, we we wouldn't see any directionality in the transport um, in this in this case if we drive this resonator 
and we drive this effectively we will get some form of um, some some funny transport but it will be reciprocal so um what's the minimum um system where uh where where one can control uh, uh coupling and squeezing and, and now have a non reciprocity um this is one possibility uh is it's uh, it's a three mode system um it's now again corresponds to three modes on this mechanical uh um structure and the optomechanical cavity where uh uh, one applies two uh, drives at the sum frequency between these modes. So this is a two-mode squeezing uh, interaction, the blue the blue arrows. And there is also a frequency difference uh, drive uh, that creates a hopping interaction. Um, now here you clearly see that that there is uh, that there is a loop. Um, there is no need to 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 split the, the the modes into particles and holes to recognize that there is a loop here. Um, but if you still uh, insist and uh, divide the basically split split this this network into particles and holes, you can see that the loops are um, uh, there are two uh, loops. Uh, both of them are related by particle charge conjugation. Um, and uh, so they are effectively equivalent, and and these loops do not talk to each other. And we proved uh, in the in the paper that this is uh, a necessary and sufficient condition. Sorry, uh, a necessary and sufficient condition to have a non non reciprocal uh, transport of uh, of excitations of energy here, as I will show uh, in a second. If you now calculate again the the, the complex uh, dispersion, you see that through this uh, through these flux uh, or this flux is the same, uh, the 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 dispersion is tuned accordingly. One can tune the also the order of the the degeneracies here. So um, so one can go from a twofold degeneracy to a threefold uh, degeneracy uh, or exceptional point. And more importantly, one can realize uh, directional amplification. So in this case, uh, the, these are experimental results. Um, driving one resonator here and uh, observing the result here um, well, depends, on, depends on the flux, depends on, on, on whether um, basically the, the, the flux is it's, it's forcing you to to move in the uh, counterclockwise direction or in the clockwise direction. You see here that when I drive uh, the mode one and I look at two, um, I get most of the most of the excitation uh, when the flux is equal to pi over two, and uh, when the when the flux is uh, is opposite, uh, not only I get less excitation, but in fact you can check that um, the uh, the signal is attenuated. Um, the, basically, the, the the signal is anti-squeezed. It's uh, it's uh, yeah experiences loss, extra loss. Um, and if you and if you now uh, flick uh, flip up the the mode that you are driving, you see the opposite behavior. Um, and this was also uh, summarized in this in this paper. Uh, so um, let me just now uh, uh, jump to the next part of my talk. But before that. Just a reflection here. I, I, I've shown you that um, that the use of uh, artificial magnetic fields or creating magnetic fields that break down reversal symmetry uh, plus adding gain in this case through squeezing um, it creates a non-reciprocal behavior. But now uh, it is is this the only way to create non-reciprocity? That was. Uh, uh, our motivation for the next part, and indeed it's not. Um, there is by by um, uh, by the time that we were working on this, uh, results appeared on on the on the on a model which which is now known as the as the Bosonic Kitaev chain. Uh, a Kitaev chain is uh, it's a model. It's a it's a one D um, it's a one D uh, chain. Uh, where uh, that combines um, hopping interactions with uh, two modes. Um, well, in this case, there are two 
well, it's quizzing if this is bosonic, uh, but it's usually pairing uh, if this is fermionic um, interactions. And uh, this model has been looked in the fermionic context, uh, context uh, a while ago already. It's it's known to 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 host um, unpaired uh, topological excitations, um, allegedly Majorana fermions, um, and it was studied um, back a few years ago uh, in the in the bosonic context. Um, if one takes the fermionic model and essentially replaces uh, fermions by 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 bosons, uh, one finds that the the, the model is not topological uh, per se. There is no non-trivial topology, or apparently, or there is no non-trivial topology according to to the expectation from the fermionic case. There is there is no winding uh, number. But still, one can uh, take the one can take now these uh, these these couplings, and and look at a particular case where they are both imaginary and equal. And one finds that now the quadratures of, of these modes here um, couple directionally. So the X quadratures only couple, in this, in this case, they only couple to, uh, to either the P quadratures or the X, in this case, it's the X quadratures, they only couple to the P quadratures, uh, but not to another, to other X quadratures. And this implies that if you now are able to uh, to drive the system such that um, um, only it's one type of quadrature is excited, um, you, you get a very funny behavior, which is that the quadratures, the X quadratures are amplified uh, in one direction and the P quadratures are amplified in the opposite direction. So the overall transport, the overall energy transport, which contains both X and P quadratures, it's reciprocal, but uh, if you are able to to uh, to split the transport into different phases, you see non-reciprocity. And this is very puzzling. Um, and the first question is, uh, is it because there's some hidden uh, time reversal symmetry here? Is, is, there a, is there a gauge field of any kind here? And you can quickly realize that there is no gauge field. Um, time reversal symmetry is not broken. Uh, if one takes, for instance, one of the on the unit cells uh, of this of this uh, system, um, this is the effect. This is now on the particle whole language. Um, this is now this shows now the phase uh, accumulation upon hopping. Uh, remember the couplings were imaginary. And, and this is now this now represents the process of two mode squeezing. So it's the, the annihilation of a particle somewhere and the creation of a hole in another resonator. The overall flux is zero. So there is no uh, breaking of time reversal symmetry. Uh, but still there is something interesting going on. If you now write the equations of the quadratures um, in the basis of the quadratures for just two resonators, two coupled and two mode squeezed, uh, which are at the same time two mode squeezed resonators. You see that now here, this is the hopping amplitude and this is the two mode squeezing amplitude. Uh, you can see that they can cancel out. So then you get uh, an X uh, quadrature, which is decoupled from the, from the P quadrature. It's basically not coupled to anything in this, in this two mode model. So, Indeed, this is now not caused by a, by, by a gauge field, but there is some uh, form of, uh, of interference uh, process. There is an, a destructive interference, pr interference process um, between the processes of hopping and two mode squeezing. But you can also visualize, you could potentially visualize here as well. Um, so in order to check if this is uh, actually true, um, uh, we went back and did an experiment on the same platform. This is an again an optomechanical cavity. Uh, you use two we couple to two mechanical modes through a uh, hopping and two mode squeezing interactions, and and now we reconstruct what is the response uh, of the system. Um, this is the response matrix or the susceptibility matrix when we drive. Uh, each of the quadratures in each of the modes. And you can see that if you drive the X 
quadrature in the first mode, there is nothing uh, coming out on the P quadrature on the second mode. So in this case, uh, when you look at these quadratures, the transport is non-reciprocal. But the non-reciprocity is gone when you uh, change the phase of the drive. Uh, sorry, when you change the phase of the the phase of the of the coupling, and 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 this we we show in the paper in detail that it's equivalent to a gauge transformation. So it's a non-reciprocal transport that is gauge dependent. And it is only uh, for a given for a given you know, or, or, or conversely for a given phase there is only a certain pair of quadratures that will experience this uh, this non reciprocity and if we look at the wrong ones then it's gone and indeed if you go from a phase equal to zero from a phase to a phase equal to pi over two the non reciprocity is flipped so you go from x one uh, to uh, to nothing coming out. Uh, so sorry. So to everything coming out on P two, but if you drive P two, nothing comes out of X one out of X one. Um, and this is all. Uh, this is now. Um, it's uh, it's uh, our we 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 tried now to define a class of systems that fulfill this property, and we discuss in the paper how. These are all systems where time reversal symmetry is maintained. So we develop a criterion to, to, to find out if, if time reversal symmetry is maintained, similar to, to counting the phase over, over the loops. You can see more details in the, in, the, in the reference. And also an experimental protocol to see time reversal symmetry in these systems is at all maintained. Um, effectively, if you look at the response of the modes as a function of, of phases in your problem, if you see that the response doesn't change at all, uh, it's either because uh, the system is uh, completely is completely trivial, like in this case where you just have two modes and, and no loop at all, or um, or uh, the phase that you are changing is gauge invariant. So this is just sort of uh, um, uh, an obvious thing. But now, if you now have uh, uh, a more complicated scenario where time reversal symmetry is broken. Um, uh, the phases will cause the, the the resonance frequency of your system to to move around. So the systems that we care about uh, in this this quadrature non reciprocal systems are systems where time reversal symmetry is kept. So effectively, they are these type of systems. And if you do uh, the math, uh, you can you can see that um, you further need besides uh, besides uh, time reversal symmetry, uh, that the number of modes in the system is uh, even, because effectively you need that for a, a given quadrature there will be another quadrature that can cancel out the effect of this one, um, and there is a family of systems that you can build up, um, a large family of systems where you combine uh, hopping interactions with two mode splitting interactions and find uh, combinations of quadratures in the system that uh, where this non-reciprocity uh, happens. Uh, this is now this is now yet another case. Uh, it's experimental data. And you see that now the non-reciprocity uh, or these uh, asymmetries in the response matrix uh, happen only for uh, for this particular uh, sets of, uh, of of quadratures. And and we found that there is also a direct connection between these. Uh, these uh, quadrature combinations uh, that are non-reciprocal and um, and the topic of, of, of quantum non-demolition uh, measurements. Um, and just lately, uh, I think I'm over time already. <laughs> I will just, uh, just briefly uh, tell you, or I'm almost over time, I just briefly tell you um, that uh, the Kita F, uh, model uh, in in the in the bosonic setting that i uh, introduced earlier uh, it's a subclass of uh, of these quadrature non reciprocal systems um so we implemented it uh, using again the same system an optomechanical cavity um you find that that the response is non reciprocal uh, as expected and also that the uh, this the the gain of the system uh, follows an exponential law 
meaning that if you uh, traverse the gain in one direction, you see effectively the X quadrature being amplified uh, at the same time as the P quadrature gets uh, attenuated along the chain. This was all expected in the in the in the first theory uh, work on the Poisson Nikita chain. But what was not clear is it if this non reciprocity uh, that we observe here or this uh, gain is related at all with topology, and this is what we were trying to answer here. And we found and just. Mm, overview this, uh, if you are interested, I'm happy to give you more details, that uh, it is indeed, uh, it is related with uh, with uh, with a non-trivial topology. So um, in our system, we could uh, we could tune the the hopping and the and the two mode squeezing uh, interactions, not only in amplitude, in amplitude, but also in phase in a way that we can uh, come into uh, the topological regime, which is actually the regime where directional amplification happens, and out of it. So uh, this is what these diagrams aim to show. Uh, these are diagrams that show, uh, as a function of phase, uh, the different dynamical phases where the system can, uh, can be. And um, indeed, uh, the amplification, the quadrature and reciprocity, and possibly the amplification, it's related uh, with uh, with um, uh, with the opening of a uh, of a uh, of, well, of, of 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 a phase of a non-trivial topological phase, where uh, as we show also in the paper, uh, there is a, a winding uh, of the complex spectrum um, around uh, the the origin. So there are many details about this in the paper. Um, we also show uh, experimentally that this uh, this uh, this funny uh, this funny way where the the, the quadratures uh, get amplified, the x quadratures get amplified in one direction, while the p quadratures are deamplified, can be used to to for sensing, for it leads to exponentially enhanced sensing. In fact, this was not our proposal is was firstly proposed by a group of Ash Clerk, um, and the experiment uh, shows uh, that that the responsivity of the system can actually be enhanced uh, by this process. So one can just in a single chain couple uh, use the use the couplings to the, the, the hopping phases and two mode squeezings to um, to couple x quadratures only to x quadratures in one direction and p quadratures to p quadratures in the opposite direction in such a way that the signal will be amplified as it goes from the left to right, it will interact with some um, with some um, uh, impurity that needs to be sensed and it will be then deamplified as it comes back. It will be amplified twice, uh, which is a rather unique uh, process. And um, with that, I'm already uh, in the overview. Um, I just wanted to, to highlight that all of the um, physics that I described here all relate with uh, combinations of uh, two mode squeezing, single mode squeezing, uh, hopping, all uh, in a regime where the uh, amplification is still lower than the, or still controlled by dissipation. But this is just when one looks at even just a single squeeze resonator as a function of the of the of the parametric drive strength and as a function of frequency, this is only a tiny portion of the phase diagram that these systems uh, will host. And it is well known since the beginning of the 20th century that when the amplification overcomes dissipation, the system becomes linearly unstable. And uh, it uh, uh, it comes into a nonlinear regime where many things can happen. Even classically, uh, one expects physics as such as period doubling, uh, bifurcations, uh, limit cycle behavior, and so on. And and this is part of what we uh, are interested in exploring in the future. And when the nonlinearity gets uh, then extremely large um, yeah, to the point where uh, single photons. 
uh, coming into your resonator will shift the frequency uh, to a blockade limit, um, then um, then we enter into a regime where uh, where the uh, the effects are genuinely quantum, and uh, and there is an, a nice interplay of of gauge fields there. There is a, even the possibility to promote these gauge fields that I described here to something more complicated known as dynamical gauge fields who have been explored um, in quantum simulation community for, for quite some time now. And with that, I'm just uh, at my end. Um, I uh, take the, uh, the liberty to, uh, to list the, the contributions to, to this topic. And just, uh, just I'd like to mention that there are uh, PhD and postdoc openings here uh, in Constance now um, in the group of, um, of uh, Professor uh, Silverberg. And if you are interested in working on any of these topics, um, please feel free to, to reach out. Okay, thank you so much, Javier. I really enjoyed your talk. I think it was quite interesting. So are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Javi, for, for the nice talk. Hi. Uh, so I was wondering about the, the last part, the, mm -hmm. where you're talking about the topology of these uh, Kita F chains and so on. Yeah. Um, at the end, the, the, the message that you're giving us is that you found mm -hmm. a way to uh, study all the topological phases in parametric arrays. Or, mm -hmm. or is more specific to, to the setup that you are considering? So uh, yeah, this is actually more specific to this to this setup. So it seems like um, so or in the original paper from from Ash Clerk um, uh, regarding the bosonic kita chain, there is the there is some claim somewhere that the um, the non-trivial uh, or the directional amplification will be will be related with topology, but there is no, it's not so clear what will be uh, the symmetry that will be uh, protecting this topology, for instance. And what we found is that um, it is actually not so complicated. Um, the, the fact that, that in the, this is now the, the topological uh, phase uh, case, uh, in, this, in this case, the X quadratures and the B quadratures are decoupled from one another. So there is this form of, uh, of a parity symmetry, an effective parity symmetry in these uh, X and P quadratures. And this means that, well, this is this is actually the symmetry that is protecting the topological phase. And uh, one can, uh, in this case, see that the this bosonic type chain is equivalent to what it's called the Hatano-Nelson model. Um, but it's a Hatano-Nelson model for, um, for the two quadratures. It's like two copies of the Hatano-Nelson model. And if you now um, see how one can study the topology of a Hatano Nelson model, um, by noticing this, you can you can generalize it to, to the bosonic type chain quite directly. But it's I'd say that it's it's specific to this case. Okay, thank you. And uh, just a very quick related one with this. Yeah. Uh, the, the role of dissipation, I'm not super sure about uh, no. to what point you have introduced it in the topological part because I see the non hermeticity coming from the um, yeah. from the pairing terms, let's say. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you also included in the description the dissipative photon losses and so on. Yeah, that's uh thank you. So uh it's true dissipation is it's uh it's unavoidable. Um it's of course unavoidable here. Um in this in this case, uh, the so we included it. Um, we see that in practice, it shifts the topological phase boundaries a little bit. Um, it does not uh, change uh, the, the the physics uh, once we enter in the non-trivial um, uh, part. It just shifts a little bit the um, not only the topological phases but the the responses uh, the the complex responses are shifted by it it doesn't uh, break the most important part is that it doesn't break uh, the symmetry that is protecting the topological phase which in this case it's the is this uh, decoupling uh, between the x and p quadrature so dissipation does not um, change that if you will have something a little bit more 
um, annoying, like dissipative coupling or or detunings in your in your network, then you will be uh, be in a little bit more uh, trouble to keep up with uh, the topological um, phase here. But yeah, we include dissipation in all of these plots. Uh, dissipation it's included, but the effect is mostly quantitative. Okay. Say. Thank you. Okay, someone else. Uh, I have a question. Well, first, uh, thank you for the great talk. This was very well explained. Actually, I feel tempted to ask you for some of your slides. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <For> my own. <laughs> because they were very, very nicely presented. But anyways, um, well, it's, uh, it's a very interesting work. And I'm, I was wondering about the... Um, about the, this picture that you have uh, presented, where you have the um, A and A dagger for bosons, mm -hmm. yep. you interpret them as, as particles and holes. Mm -hmm. I think this makes sense if you think at a, at a classical level, so to say, mm -hmm. you have A and A dagger are like independent variables, and then you can make this interpretation, like they are they are kind of different particles, and you can mm -hmm. you can argue in, ma in mathematic mathematical terms about these loops and so on. I was wondering whether this picture goes beyond that mm -hmm. level into quantum quantum fluctuations as well. Can they, because for fairness, this holds for quantum fluctuations as well. You can properly mm -hmm. define at operator level, mm -hmm. exchange of uh, this definition. So you can properly define a hole as a, as a proper particle. But I wonder whether here is the same or it's more, it's more something that works at equations of motion level, but then doesn't survive the, the quantum reading. I think it's a great, uh, it's a great question. So, um, to be honest, I don't know the full answer. I suspect that it won't hold when we now go beyond the the first moments, mm -hmm. uh, the first moment equations. When we go now to second cumulants or any such a approach, um, it might be though that. Um, that that one can, but this I don't know for sure. Uh, that one can still find a, a way to to so a, a more generalized uh, operator sets uh, mm -hmm. where one can describe um, uh, where we can describe gauge fields also as as uh, or or we can also describe loops as transitions between the eigenstates of these generalized operators. Um, I don't know for sure how to generalize this. I don't know for sure. I know I, I, for now it only relies on the fact that that yeah, if you do the Bogolub of the gens typical, uh, it's the, the usual expansion, um, you get this this uh, this effective um, independent variables. But yes, be, 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 from that point on, it's uh, it's not so clear. Uh -huh. I don't know the answer. Okay, but it's very interesting, of course. <laughs> Well, I, well, I think it would be nice if you, if you come to visit us at some point, if you are in Madrid, because I think, well, I have many questions. This is somehow related to our work, but I mean, you look yeah. at the problem from a very different angle. For example, this, this non-reciprocity through, through bosonic uh, by the pairing terms, so to say, the, is there, it's a very interesting idea that I, uh, it's a very interesting angle for the problem. So yeah, yes, I mean, it would be nice if we can can discuss here. We we are also looking at nonlinearities mm -hmm. as well. So this is something that I mean oh. I agree with you. It's, it's a very interesting problem, but of course uh, it it becomes very easily very complicated to understand because contrary to other uh, systems that are more regular, like spin Hamiltonians or whatever. Here you you start getting into this. If you just start having these uh, nonlinearities, you, you can have these cycles that you were mentioning. So the definition the definition of steady state is not so so obvious sometimes. Yeah. So I'm sure there would be many fun, a lot of funny things to discuss with you. Yeah, yeah, happily, happily. Yeah. Uh, actually, um maybe um maybe we could also uh, I could also tell you a little bit about um the approaches that we've been working on to to describe those. Yeah. I mean, even even in the classical even in the classical uh, regime, they are quite rich and and, and nice. Uh, um, yeah. It's a whole 
set of, I mean, in this, in this, I'm, I'm just highlighting here that, that this is experiments now. And in this case, uh, we are, um, you are at the uh -huh. regime where the linear gain is already larger than dissipation. So you see that uh, you reach, um, you start from, for instance, a time equals zero here, and then you reach uh, a point where the amplification saturates very fast and it starts oscillating. And, and this is, um, this is self oscillations. This is not described by any uh, of these, um, any of these uh, linear analysis that I did here. Uh -huh. and it's already, it's already, I think it's already quite, will be quite interesting to see how one can use these gauge fields now to, to, to control all, all of these processes as well. Yeah. Oh, well, that's really, and this is in the paper, in the, in the experimental paper or. So this is, this is, this is, um, it's discussed in the, in the paper, but we wow. didn't, we didn't, uh, um, delve into all, all of what is possible there. But there's okay. definitely nonlinear effects there. Oh, that's nice. That's very interesting. Sure. Okay, so we may have time for a last question. Especially welcome from the youngest ones. <laughs> so PhD students, don't be shy. No. Also the the not so young. <laughs> members of our group. Okay, if not, let's thank Javier again. So thank you very much, Javier, for, for giving us this quite uh, interesting seminar today. And yeah, so you are welcome to, to visit our group yeah, anytime. Probably. I will stop the, the recording now. Yeah.